Happy Monday, everyone. This is Martha with Nature Niche. And this week, I'm going to take you on location uh, to Tomlinson Arboretum. It's one of my favorite places to visit when I'm down in Macomb County, Michigan. And it's located in Clinton Township, Michigan. And it's just a lovely place to visit. They're all about getting people out into nature and showcasing Michigan's native trees and shrubs. So I just wanna show this map quickly to orient you. Um, the Arboretum occurs south of Canal Road, uh, east of Garfield Road, north of 18 Mile, and west of Romeo Plank Road. So my friend Dan Lepo is going to take us on a personal tour um, and he's going to talk about the east entrance, which is off of Romeo Plank Road on the right side of this map, and the west entrance, which is off the little cul-de-sac, that little dead end turnaround of 18 Mile Road. He's also going to mention the founders of the Arboretum, and I just wanted to show this, this plaque and, and mention uh, these gentlemen with this this great idea for the residents of Clinton Township. So Dr. Carl Becker, Ray Gleim, Don Green, and Jim Hungerford um, all were involved with the establishment of the Arboretum. And here's a photo of these gentlemen. Um, just what a great idea and resource and really a sanctuary for um, people in a rather built up environment to be able to have this um, native tree and shrub park to enjoy. Visiting Tomlinson Arboretum is really a great way to practice your native tree and shrub identification. They have at least 60 species. Here's a list of um, some of those that you can observe, get up close, and um, enjoy in all the different seasons. Hi, I'm Dan Leppo. I'm the coordinator of the Friends of the Arboretum and the primary caretaker of the 25 acre site of Michigan native species trees, predominantly Michigan natives. We have some indigenous trees part of the park, but for the most part, they're uh, Michigan native species. Uh, this is the east entrance behind me off of Romeo Plank Road across from the library. Uh, this wasn't the first startup. Uh, we're going to go a little bit further down. I, we were here today, Martha, at the 15 acres. It's broken up into two sections, the West Arboretum, which is 15 acres, and the East Arboretum, which we're in, 10 acres. Uh, this is landlocked, it's narrow strip. There's subdivisions on both sides, and as you can see behind me, there's a busy road, and it goes from east to west, and then it takes a right turn and goes into the 15 acre plot, and that's also landlocked with uh, subdivisions all around it. Uh, back in 2008, four retired gentlemen, uh, looked at a piece of empty land that was a park and all was there was grass and the D Department of Public Works cut the grass because it was a park, but there was nothing there. We have our water tower there. So the township didn't want anything else to be there. No ball fields, no picnic areas, anything like that. And they looked at that piece of land and they said, hmm, we should do something with this. So they decided, how about a tree park, an arboretum? So they went to the board of trustees and made a proposition. And the board of trustees, of course, said, well, who's gonna pay for this? And they said, oh, didn't we tell you? There's no taxpayer dollars involved. We're going to be self-supporting. We're going to have people sponsor trees and benches, and we'll raise enough money to support the entire park. Well, we've done that, and then some. So the, the uh, Board of Trustees supports us in all our endeavors because they know we are improving the quality of life in the township. We're enhancing the quality of life, and it's not costing taxpayers any money. So we have about 1,000 uh, native trees, predominantly native trees in the Arboretum. About a fourth of them are in the East Arboretum where we're standing. The three-fourths are in the West Arboretum. And the reason for that is the mission for the East Arboretum is to create a park-like setting, which is what we have. Uh, we have one-fourth of our trees here, predominantly native, uh, native Michigan trees. And as far as numbers, we have a total of about a thousand trees planted since 2008. Uh, we have uh, roughly 65 of the 95 species that are native to the state of Michigan uh, in the park. Our, our objective is to have the largest collection of Michigan native uh, trees in the state of Michigan, and I think we're well on our way. 
Uh, 52 out of the 65 uh, are in fact um, Michigan natives. Huh? The, the rest of those were here when we started. They're indigenous to the area, but I can't be sure if they're all native, but we know that 52 of them are. And of the 52, 27 of the 52 species are Michigan native genotype, which means they were uh, grown, planted with yep. Michigan seeds. Mm -hmm. Uh, did you want to talk about how folks can support your effort? If they want well, to be as I mentioned, people can there. sponsor the trees, and we have, uh, out of the 1,000 trees, 243 have already been sponsored. We have 28 sponsored benches, which has provided all the funds that we need to support ourselves. We've purchased two golf carts and a couple of trailers, a lot of uh, tools to maintain the park. But mostly it's volunteers that do all the work uh, mm -hmm. from the community, and... Um, and then people give us cash donations and we get grants for some of the work that we do. Yeah, and do you have special work days um, or festivals or anything like that that people can participate? We do have, uh, we have planting days in the early years before COVID. I would have a plant day in the spring and another plant day in the fall. Yep, and we would plant about 50 trees each time. So we'd plant about 100 trees uh, a year. And I would send out an invite to the Friends of the Arboretum. At this point, we have over 400 members of the Friends of the Arboretum. Nice. And out of the 400, I get 30 or 40. Yep. I get volunteers from the, uh, from the um, National Honor Society, from, from the high school, local high school. Nice. And I also get uh, some volunteers from the environmental science class at the high school. Very cool. uh, so we get a good number of people, young and old, that work here. And primarily, they do it because they want to take some ownership in the park. And of all, we get visitors by the scores uh, constantly, constantly. Martha and I, you, you just saw yeah. a couple people yep. uh, who were there for the first time. And I yep. try to meet all the new visitors, ask them how they heard about us, and ask them also if they don't donate money or if they don't sponsor a tree, at the very least be good ambassadors and tell their friends sure. about this place and bring some friends the next time they come. It's a great place to visit. I'm excited to see some of your trees. All right, very good. These two uh, white pine, uh, the state tree of Michigan were planted in 2008. They were the first two trees planted in the Arboretum. Uh, they were named after a longtime uh, Cl Clinton Township clerk named Dennis Tomlinson. So we called them the Tomlinson Pines. And the school kids came. We had a big crowd out here. School kids came, dug the dirt, you know, and they planted the tree. These two trees were put in here in 2008, and they were only about six feet tall at that time. Today, I would say they're a good 20 feet tall. So in 15 years, they've grown 20 feet. One of the ways that we support the financial needs of the Arboretum without using taxpayer dollars is through donations and sponsorship of trees and benches. Behind me is one side of the kiosk and I have a grid map and I'm putting up a list of the, the most recent tree sponsors. They'll all be here. We have 243 of them. So they find the name of the person on the uh, plaque on the tree, and then they look at the grid location, and then in the information box, they can select a smaller version of that so they can locate the tree and uh, go visit the tree. More tulip trees, we got, we got sugar maple, we have red maple, more tulip tree. We have some bur oak over here. The darker ones up here are bur oak. They're beautiful. They like this place, Royal. Those are the wait for us. See the, the oh, seeds? Oh, yeah. No leaves, but we have the uh, we have the oh, seeds. Oh yeah. Uh, hot trees. Hot trees, yeah. yeah. Tulip trees. Broke over there, and uh, um, uh, tulip trees. Uh, our pawpaw, our chestnut, uh -huh. uh, a button bush right here. Oh yeah. And the, see the buttons on the top of see yeah. those? Very pretty. Supposedly waterfowl like those. Yeah. Um, yeah. We have um, honey locust right here, red cedar. Look at the cones on that. The birds will be so happy. This is button bush over here as well. Uh huh. And then uh, we've got the white pine, red cedar, uh, wild American, American uh, plum. We have gray, gray um, dogwood right here. Okay. We have nine bark right here. Uh -huh. So you got gray dogwood and nine bark yeah, spreading. So you have shrubs, not just shrubs, trees. right? Yeah. This is our maple grove. These are all 
mostly red maples, but there are some sugar maples back there. Uh -huh. and over here, this is our chokeberry and black choke, choke cherry and uh -huh. black chokeberry grove. Okay. These, are, these are all, except for this one maple tree here, these are all choke cherry and black chokeberry. Like you see the sign there, black yeah. chokeberry. Ooh, look at the berries on them. Yeah, birds will love that too. Yeah. I put this trail in here through the woods so that people can go either way. They can walk on by the fence here or they can walk on our bike trail. And they get to get inside, immerse themselves in the woods and get a little feel for what it's like to be in the woods. So I, I wood chip this twice a year in the spring and I just did this a, uh, about three weeks ago. And now people walk through, they say, God, I love this, Dan. This is great. Thank you. This, this tree is a hackberry tree. It's the host tree for the the Hackberry Emperor nice. butterfly. This is the host tree for it. Uh, it's a the one way you can tell that this is a Hackberry if you look closely at the bark. It has these um, mole like mole like protuberances on the bark of the tree. They're quite they're quite prominent. And here is another Hackberry. I like to plant two trees of the same species next to each other. It's like they need a buddy. Yeah. So so we, this tree. We call this rail bark. Yes. <laughs> Sassafras tree that they used to make root beer out of. In 1960, the federal government said you could no longer make root beer because they felt that this had some carcinogenic properties. But it is a sponsored tree. And one of the unique features of this particular tree is that it is the only tree that has three different lobed leaves on the same tree. It has a unilobed leaf. I can show you that here. It's just one unilobe. It has a two lobe that looks like the mitten Michigan. Oh, yeah. From this side, uh -huh. a two lobe. And if I look quickly, I'll try to find you a, here's a three lobe. Nice. It's the only tree. So if you out, go out in the, in the field, they generally grow along the edges of, edges of forest. But you look on that tree and you'll see unilobed, dual lobed, and triple lobed leaves on the same tree. Very, very unique. Black gum. Another name is a tupelo. Down, this is the furthest northern expanse of the, uh, of the black gum, it goes up to where you're from, Martha, uh -huh. Midland. It'll yeah, get up to it'll get up to Saginaw Midland area, and then it's all south. Uh, right. In the background is the original quaking aspen tree that I planted ah. back in 2014. It is now probably about 25 feet tall. It's a very fast-growing tree. But what I wanted to really make you understand is that as you look around that, these are all Quaking aspen. Quaking aspen grows underground by rhizomes and they are clonal. So a little history on this real quickly. The largest, oldest living organism on the planet yes. is a quaking aspen grove. Really, and I, um, advisors discovered it. The yeah. one they believe is, there's a term of the name, begins with a P. It's supposed to be 80,000 years old. Pando. Pando, yes. 80,000 years old. Yeah. If we did not have grass completely around this grove, oh, it would take yeah. over the entire arboretum. But as long as you have it surrounded by grass, the lawnmower guys keep cutting the clones that come up in the grass. Yeah. The grove, these are all quaking aspen. Isn't that all cool? Part of a clone. Yeah. That's all a clone. Bert would say, Bert Barnes, the one who discovered the world's largest organism, would say, Aspen uberalis, Aspen overall in German. This is a, a basswood tree. Now it's toward the end of the season, so it's starting to turn color and, and uh, leaves are falling. There's another basswood there, nice uh -huh. specimen there. And I have a third one right over here. Put them all three in a row. Uh -huh. So these three are basswoods. Another name for basswood is linden tree. And uh, they're a fast growing tree. Uh, you have a small leaf uh, linden and a large leaf. These are all large leaf linden trees. This is a Kentucky coffee tree. Um, it's not really used for coffee, but if you wanted to, um, as it matures, there'll be these like purse-like, big brown purse-like uh, uh, bags that grow on these. And in the, during the uh, Civil War, okay. 
uh, the Confederates didn't have real coffee, so they used the seeds in these like purse-like bags on the Kentucky coffee tree, and it happened to be in Kentucky. Yep. And so they took the seeds, ground them up, and they made uh, something like chick chicory coffee. But gotcha. it's a substitute for coffee, but it really doesn't. It's not very good. But uh, the Kentucky, that's the name came from Kentucky coffee tree because the Confederate soldiers used it in the South. This is one of the few trees that the um, leaves are bipinnately compound, so. The leaf actually starts back here. Back on the stem. Yep, and then and then it has um, another set of like another division of leaves. And they're opposites. Yep. On the, on the... Yep. Opposite here, and then when you look along one, they're alternate. So like alternate, right? This is one huge leaf. This is a tulip tree. This will be the tallest tree at maturity in the park. These things can grow over 100 feet tall, 150 feet. When you go to the Great Smoky Mountain National Park, the tallest tree in the Great Smoky Mountain National Park is the tulip tree. Um, it's a unique tree. If you notice the leaves, they look like a tulip. They do. They look like a tulip, and that's why they call it a tulip tree. And the other distinguishing feature is that they have flowers. They have flowers, and this yeah, one, would it would have been sometimes they're June, sometimes they're later but they have these beautiful flowers. And once it becomes a mature tree, you won't be able to see the flowers from the bottom. You have to go up on a high rise and look down on the tree. You can see all these, uh, these flowers. And orange. Yeah, they're beautiful flowers. Now, the, the, what I can tell you briefly about the hemlock is that they, they can live a long, long time, many, many hundreds of years in the right conditions. And um, I mean, they've got cases of them being six, seven, 800 years old. Um, the, the hemlock are in danger uh, along in the Appalachians. Right. Uh, the woolly adelgid is attacking the hemlock population. Yeah. Uh, there's there's some hope on the horizon in the Great Smoky Mountain National Park area. They have a partnership with the University of Tennessee, and they've developed a beetle that eats these uh, the woolly adelgid. Uh -huh. And um, but they cost two fifty a piece, two dollars and fifty cents. They put a quarter million in there, Whoa. so they spend almost a, mil a million dollars. Uh, most communities don't have that kind of money. Sure. So while they feel they have them under control in the Great Smoky Mountain National Park, outside the park, moving north all the way through the Appalachian chain, um, there, there's a real problem there. Yep. I'm watching carefully. That's they're not wonderful. this. They're not here yet. They're not here. And I hope they won't be for a long, long, long time. Um, maybe they'll they're have those. They're monitoring on the west side of the state. They right. Have. They're watching yeah. them. Yep. But if they come here, I know the, the attributes of them. They'll be frothy, white waxy in the joints of the where the the stems come out mm -hmm. and when i see that i'm prepared to because they're so small i can yeah. treat them in the great smoky mountains you can't do this they're just too big and too expanse yeah. chestnuts i'm going to get you get one two to three uh three nuts in each one of those little uh, spiny uh pods now what kind of chestnut are these again? these are the hybrid i tried oh, american okay. chestnut oh, they all died yeah. so, so then i had to go and get and in order to uh, to actually have nuts, you have to have two different varieties, which I do. Okay. Each of these are two, two different varieties. Uh -huh. So they both have uh, chestnuts on them. Those are, those, are, those are cool. Yeah. Here, this is tamarack. Now, wow. another name for tamarack is larch, yes. L-A-R-C-H. And these are very unique. I have to tell the story on, on these. The, the tamarack tree generally grow in bogs. This is not a bog, this is the side of a hill. <laughs> Uh, but they will grow. And, and now the interesting story about tamarack is these are the only conifers that act like a deciduous tree. Mm -hmm. You can see they're starting down. They're there. starting to turn. Yeah. These needles will turn yellow. Then the whole trees will be yellow and orange. Look very pretty. And people who don't know will say, oh my God, you're losing all your trees. They're dying. You say, no, they're not dying. They're going to drop all their needles. First they turn yellow, then orange, and then they, they drop, they defoliate. They drop their needles. Oh, wow. And then in the spring, bingo, they grow back. <laughs> it's the only conifer that does that. That's the story on the uh, camera. It's beautiful yellow fall color. Oh, it is. One when people, oh, it'll turn such a beautiful orange. So those are the trees that I wanted to highlight for you. I hope you enjoyed Dan's tour of Tomlinson Arboretum. There's um, there are other gardens that are definitely worth seeing there. They deserve their own posts, though. 
And um, Tomlinson's just a great example of showcasing our natural heritage. I hope if you ever find yourself in Clinton Township that you stop by and uh, check out some of Michigan's native trees and shrubs on display. Take care and have a good week.